I'm going to do a quick overview that uh, we have different speakers on tonight. Uh, we have uh, Shelby and Mike. Uh, Shelby from LHOP and uh, Mike McKenna um, from Tabor as the president. Uh, and uh, they're our leadership here as we uh, move forward at Tabor LHOP and uh, as we uh, try to bring things together. But some of our other speakers are uh, Adrian Garcia, uh, Miriam Soto, uh, uh, Randy Schober, and myself, Todd Capiteo. Uh, see a lot of familiar faces. So I think that uh, as we, the speakers go through, if they just want to introduce who they are and uh, their positions within Tabor and LHOP, uh, that would be great. We want to go over the resource document that we sent out about a week ago. We continue to update it. It's a living document. Uh, so we wanted to go through and review that real quick to make sure that everyone was aware of the tools that are available and the resources. Uh, but we also wanted to give a good opportunity for folks to be able to ask questions. Uh, that's a big part of this because we want to see uh, what you're seeing if you're from another organization um, but uh, what your clients are experiencing, or if you're individually have questions, by, by all means, please ask those. Uh, but we're gonna try to go through the resource document first, and then at the end, uh, try to take the majority of the questions. Uh, if something comes up in the, in the middle and you wanna go in the chat box, either on here on Zoom or on Facebook, uh, we can try to get those answered as we go through. Uh, so I'm for without further ado, I'm gonna, hand it over to uh, Mike and Shelby, and they'll be able to get us started. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to just um, say a little bit about this partnership um, and how the guide came to be. So Tabor and LHOP have been exploring, uh, working together more closely for some time. And then over the summer, that really turned into a serious conversation around what would it look like if we were one organization. We are united by this belief that everyone deserves a place to call home. And we are both working on housing challenges that people were facing before COVID, you know, when times were quote unquote good. And now things obviously have changed so much um, in every aspect of our lives. We know that uh, the number of people who suddenly are asking tough questions about mortgage payments and rent payments and auto loans and credit cards and everything else, um, has grown and grown just from where it was three weeks ago uh, because more and more employers um, have had to close as part of a, an appropriate response to the disease, but a very difficult one nonetheless. So um, we've started to work on how we can come together as one agency. And we saw that in this response to a really serious community crisis uh, brought on by COVID, we needed to work together and bring this collective brain trust that we have at both organizations, people, uh, who are very experienced in, in helping people overcome housing and financial challenges. How do we put that knowledge together to make it useful to our neighbors across Lancaster? Uh, so that's how the guide came to be. We are trying to make sure we keep it updated because uh, as I'm sure like all of you, I see every day, sometimes every hour, there's new information coming out from this government agency or that government agency or this bank or another bank. So we're trying to sift through all of that for you and boil it down to the, the essential stuff. Um, so we actually just put out an update a couple, a couple days ago, and we will continue to do that for you. I'm going to hand it over to Shelby so she can talk to you a little bit about uh, the structure of the guide and, and what to look for in there. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone, for being here. The table of contents on the first page um, is sort of the easy um, link guide. So if you have specific questions about paying bills, loans, managing money, um, there are some quick links there. Uh, same goes for resources in terms of utility assistance, food resources, and then a very comprehensive list of social service providers in Lancaster and York. Um, and then very specific information because this is our bread and butter um, and, and we're working a lot with uh, both landlords and renters. So information for renters to be proactive, landlords, um, to also be proactive and communicate with um, tenants and vice versa. And then some special topics around um, supporting individuals with mental health conditions um, and other sort of uh, 
you know, uh, topics that we know are going to come up and, and we'll continue to update that. Um, the other thing I will say too, if, if you have folks um, that you're working with that you would you think would like to have this information um, but might respond better to it in video form we're kind of breaking all of these down um, into videos and we're also releasing sort of one pager um, quick link information on on our facebook pages so um, if, if any of that is specific um, to the work that you're doing and, and you would want that you can certainly reach out to me um, after this webinar so one of the key things um, that I focused on when we were looking at putting these pages together was information on and around the, one of the biggest concerns, which is how to pay your bills. Um, not just your mortgage, but all that that entails. Mortgage is just one of the, it might be the biggest, uh, one of your biggest pay, uh, payments for the month but there are other considerations. So we wanted to make sure that we included a one pager where you could get um, just uh, all, as much information as possible. I, I looked at the Consumer Finance Protect, Protection Agency as uh, the premier um, page to get, gain a lot of information. And so if you direct your clients to this website, what you'll see is not just mortgages, and information on mortgages, but also other bills, your, your credit cards, your PPNL utilities. Um, you're gonna look at information for student loans um, and car payments. So this is a catch-all. This is a great place to gain information for your clients that you may be serving. Um, and as they're calling in and asking questions. So one of the key things is, um, for clients, if I'm um, instructing them or directing them with information is um, basically to get their ducks in a row, which would mean um, they probably would want to talk to an agency such as Tabor to get their expenses and assets together to understand where they're at as far as financial needs. Um, of co course, if they lost their income, that's that's huge. And so they need to understand where they're at cash flow today and uh, what can they pay and then come up with a strategy. A counseling agency such as Tabor can help them really hone in on the objectives for themselves. So that's really key. So this is an information gathering page, but also that I guess the first step would be to connect with a counseling agency such as Tabor and get their ducks in a row. Also, do they have their paperwork in order? Do they have their social security cards? Do they have their IDs? If they're going to a food bank, do they have those documents in order? Do they have a schedule plan from a Monday through Tuesday, um, Friday, what they're gonna be doing to get these resources? So the first step is mortgages, understanding that process, what, um, what acts are in place um, for variance modifications. Again, the Consumer Finance Protection Agency's website is chock full, um, taking them step by step. You can also direct them to our, to our offices if there's some questions. Um, there is a contact for Tabor as well if they're in the foreclosure process. There is a stay on foreclosures. Um, people may not be aware of that. Individuals may not even be behind on the mortgages at this time, but they want to anticipate that they may have some challenges. So they want to start the conversation early because there's a lot of individuals calling in. So again, it's to summarize, getting the paperwork together, getting their IDs, coming up with a plan, scheduling with their counseling agency such as Tabor, and then talking to their utilities offices. Can I get a payment plan? Um, what are my options? Um, can I change my payment date? Those are the things that um, they should be considering and that uh, a counseling agency or agent or a, counseling, uh, a counselor can assist them to put together. So Todd, I don't know if that is what you were looking for as far as a summary of this particular- that was perfect, page. thank you, Miriam. Um, and then the next page here goes over um, what I think is one of the key things that uh, Miriam brought up 
Uh, but the misconception that a lot of folks have about if you have an issue where you, you start to see that you might not be able to pay your bills regardless of what it is, instead of actually reaching out to that creditor or that landlord or that mortgage company before there's an actual problem and saying, do you have any programs for me? We usually wait until it's a real problem. And uh, so my biggest thing is to be proactive. Uh, call, even if like right now you can pay all your bills, we're in the midst of a crisis. There might be options for you that would help you save. And it sounds weird to say, is there, there's a crisis going on and I'm gonna look to save more money. Uh, well, we don't know how long something like this will last. We don't know how long people will be out of work, how long social distancing, if it's a permanent thing from going forward. And so this, I'm, I just wanted to, to touch base to make sure folks know that if you're in the midst of a crisis or even if it's everything's going well, if, if you can go in and be proactive calling the mortgage company, calling the car company, whatever, uh, calling all your utilities, like, uh, like your cell phone, in your cable bill, you know, all those things, they might be able to give you a better deal, not only because we're in the middle of a crisis, but because maybe you signed up three years ago and there's just something better. Um, so that was my key point for that. The other part is going to what Miriam was talking about was there was a halt on foreclosures and evictions. Uh, the federal uh, eviction moratorium took effect on the 27th and it goes for 120 days. Well, there's actually another 30 days tacked onto that. So it's a total of 150 days that people have a moratorium for. Um, so what that means or what that doesn't mean is probably the better thing. What that doesn't mean is I don't have to pay my bills. And I know that sounds kind of humorous, but there's a lot of folks out there that have reached out to Tabor, at least on the eviction side and said, well, I'm not worried about being evicted because Governor Wolf said I can't be evicted. And that is true, you can't be evicted right now, but that's just a postponement of the eviction. There's just a postponement of the foreclosure. It's still gonna happen. It's just gonna happen when the, the arrearage, the money that's owed is much, much larger. Uh, most mortgage companies that I've seen have been willing to give up to six months uh, in some sort of agreement and they're working out how you'd repay that. Um, if it's put back to the end of the loan, or someplace else throughout that or, or different things. But they're willing to work with you, but you have to ask for these things while the crisis is in place. If you wait until August, let's say, and everything's been diverted and everything's starting to open back up, um, these, these same programs may not be available uh, because we're, we may not be in the midst of the, the crisis that we are right now. Um, so those are the type of things going back to the pre pre being proactive part. Uh, and now I'm going to transfer this over to Randy. She's our uh, expert on student loan relief and let her review this document with us. They have also, Navient, thank you. They have also discontinued any um, automatic payments. People might not be aware of that, but if your student loan did not come out of your checking account this, this month, what has happened is they've actually if you had an automatic payment set up, it was automatically stopped. And so you'll notice for the next six months, um, those will not occur. So if you did want to make a payment on your student loan, you may have to contact your servicer, send a check, or do something other than what you have been doing. The other thing that um, is also happening is if you were subject to a tax offset, or a wage garnishment, you may also notice that that has stopped. Um, this is a, uh, there is also a possibility if they did, if you did file your taxes and you were subject to a tax offset that you could uh, potentially petition the US Department of Education for a refund on that tax offset. Um, if you have avoided filing your income taxes, because of the off tax, the tax offset, um, you will have until July 15th at this point. And so um, once FIDA is back up and running, or if there's, um, if you feel comfortable filing online, this is the time uh, to do so. If you have a private loan, you're going to need to reach out to your servicer individually 
and um, discuss potential options with them. But very much similar to um, the mortgage companies and the credit cards and the loan loan companies, I believe they do will find that um, they're being considerate of the current circumstances and can most likely find some type of relief uh, and ways to assist you. So again, don't hesitate to reach out and contact your loan servicer. And now's the time to be proactive. Thank you, Randy. And uh, the next one here, I'm not gonna go through all of these steps here. Uh, there's multiple steps. That kind of, we've kind of touched base on a little of them right now, but I, I really like this form. And one of the big ones, number five, right in the middle is being proactive. So definitely want to continue to look at that. Um, doing your taxes, like what Randy had just brought up, uh, but finding resources, calling your lenders, all of those type of things. Um, but I, I think one of the big ones here is what, what Miriam had brought up. Number 13 is to, to set up a time, regardless of where you are in your process, uh, set up your time, how to, how to spend and save uh, during this time and coming up with a plan. If you already have a plan, that's great. If you want someone just to review it and maybe confirm some things, we can do that as well. Um, but I think that th this is just getting some, some common practices that I think are very helpful during a, a crisis like this. And uh, the next step here is the lender contact. And I think we've got Miriam back up to be able to do that for us. So this will be the next step. Um, it's a great segue, Todd. Once you come up with your plan, um, you wanna know who you need to contact, who you need to call. The key to this is if you were, if you have a mortgage, you need to understand who your servicer is. It may not be the original bank that you started the application with and closed on the loan. So you do wanna look at your statement and find out who your, who's servicing your loan. Is it a government-backed loan? Is it not a government-backed loan? That's kind of key because some of these initiatives that we have right now where you may be able to do a, a you know, a, a deferment or a, a forbearance on a loan, um, you're gonna have the easier process if it's a government backed loan because these things are in place. Is If it's a private mortgage or if it's held, it's not a, a government backed held or held um, mortgage, then you need to talk directly to your mortgage or your loan servicer. And you need to understand if they have any particular specialized programs. Here's a list of all the banks that um, we either work with or we have relationships with. Um, if your client's institution is not listed here, they need to look at their statement, mortgage statement to find out who their servicer is. And again, the key is to prepare, get their ducks in a row, and then start making these phone calls. The sooner, the better. A lot of individuals do not want to wait till they're in that crisis mode. Um, they're probably, I mean, they're more willing to work with you now in the, the heat of what's going on. Um, if you wait down the road, that could really impact if you're going to get some type of relief or workout. So here's the list of the institutions. Um, that we work with, but again, they want to look at their statement to find out who their servicer is. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Miriam. And Mike's up with utility assistance and others. Yeah, we know that this uh, sudden change to, to all of our budgets doesn't just affect housing, though, of course, as, as Miriam pointed out, that's usually the largest expense. Uh, but if you look at the whole budget and the resources that are out there, it hopefully helps you come up with a plan. So there are supports for utility assistance available at uh, our partner agency, Community Action Partnership. You go to their website, caplank.org, you'll be able to find information about how to sign up with the customer assistance programs. Those programs are offered by PPNL and UGI, but they're handled by the team members at CAP. Uh, and that's a very experienced team. So they can help you get set up with things like budget billing or, or deposit waivers or uh, programs like OnTrack where you make a, a monthly payment and then if you had arrearages, a portion of that can be forgiven. Um, you also can sign up for LIHEAP, which is a, a government program. 
Um, that's the Low Income Heat Assistance Program. Um, and that's at, at www.compass.state.pa.us. Um, and uh, then food resources, the, the organizations in the community are really going above and beyond to make sure that no one is going hungry during this really difficult time. Central PA Food Bank has a great resource on their website where you can find a food pantry nearest to you. Um, there are many located across the county. Uh, so wherever you are in the county, chances are there is a food resource, either a pantry or a community meal program that's doing, uh, you know, like a drive-through meal program available. So um, there's also a great list on Hunger Free Lancaster website about what the schools are doing. So we know a lot of families where children are, are eating breakfast or lunch at school and suddenly now eating all meals at home that can really put a dent in the budget. But a lot of the school districts are still providing those meals. And you can find information on all 16 districts in Lancaster County on that website uh, that's listed there. Um, there's lots of other organizations, including some of our partners who I think are on this call who are involved in food distribution of various kinds. So we will keep adding to that because we know that it's fast moving, but we are are so grateful to uh, our partners that are, are making sure that, that meals are taken care of for people when, when so much else has changed. Um, Todd, do you want me to talk about Tabor's financial counseling or are you gonna handle that? I can handle that part That is there. your wheelhouse. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a real quick one here. Obviously, uh, Tabor financial counseling is still available. We're still doing services by phone. We're just starting to do some via, via Zoom. So we can do them face to face, even though it's virtual. Um, but we can help with creating a spending and savings plan, helping to pay off delinquent bills, uh, what to hold off on during the crisis. Maybe we don't pay some of those off at the moment. Um, but coming up with a plan on how you can do that in the future as well. Better understanding your rights with foreclosure and eviction. Uh, we do get a lot of help from our partners like Adrian. Uh, at LHOP with Brittany in evaluating the credit um, and explaining credit. Uh, and that's gonna become crucial uh, during this time if you need to refinance or do other things that uh, these things are available and you understand it. So we do have our, our intake line there for the phone number as well as our uh, email address. Um, but the next one here too is we're gonna go just some of the service providers and this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, I know that I've uh, had conversations with some partners. We've listed some here and we're, we're in the process of updating um, some more. Uh, but uh, uh, an obvious one here is 211 uh, with the United Way that uh, if, if you have a client that really doesn't know where to go and there isn't any local resource like the factory or Effort of Social Services or the Columbia Life Network or anything right in their backyard, uh, that's the general place to start, but we've tried to list some of these that are geographic um, and uh, you know, we continue to, uh, to add to this list. Um, so like I said, definitely not exhaustive and we apologize, we apologize up front if we if you feel we missed someone there. There's only so much space that allows us to be able to put these resources in. Um, but I, I am going to uh, hand this over back to Miriam because she's probably a um, our expert here on the line about some of these services that are in the York area. So like, like Todd, because I want to make sure we have question, time for questions and answers uh, as well. So I'll make it very brief. Um, this page in particular is very similar to our, our Lancaster County page where lists out and of course they're not all the resources available in York. I also want to highlight um, prepareyork.com um, the website, um, they have a similar, uh, they have developed a similar page to ours where there's information that's listed. So it's prepareyork.com. We are listed there as a resource for closing cost assistance and other programming through LHOP and TABOR as well as the counseling. So I just want to highlight that, that um, that's a page that uh, I know they're updating with quite frequency. Again, these are the resources for, for the York area. Thank you. And then I think we're gonna hand it over to Adrian for the next few pages here uh, yeah. about renters. And again, the same uh, message of being proactive, but in a little bit different way. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Todd, and good evening. Thank you for being part of this Zoom. Um, again, in, in this crisis that we're going through, it's important to be proactive, and we've been communicating with tenants that are within our program and obviously through this uh, COVID resource, uh, community resource that we've put together uh, with Tabor. Uh, the basic premise being that, you know, communication stops from, from renter to the landlord the minute there's a hiccup on, in the finances, whether someone has lost his job or, or what have you, that communication is the first thing to go. And so we wanted to put this uh, and include this into this guide because we feel it's important that you know, if you if you want to expand on that relationship you have with that landlord, you should be proactive in your communication. And so we've put in here on this page uh, some some uh, tips so that people can can uh, take advantage of those communicating in writing, uh, so that they have a a, um, a record of whatever it is they're communicating, um, and communicate when you're feeling calm. It seems so simple, but you don't want to let emotions rule the day. You just want to take your time, be objective. Uh, and, and put down an objective message on a letter. And then we've also included some examples there. If you, uh, if you can only pay part of your rent, you know, beginning to, to ask for a payment plan or, you know, uh, start saying, I'll be able to pay this amount uh, at this time. Or maybe you can't pay anything because let's face it, many people are not able to work uh, with the shutdown. And so there's a, there's a sample there uh, for people to also make those calls. And obviously, we encourage renters to make those calls uh, first. Uh, yes, we are here and we are certainly willing to help and put together an informal housing re resolution uh, and help them out. But landlords have a greater respect when, when uh, renters take ownership of their situation and are proactive uh, in communicating. Uh, and if they run into some roadblocks, then they can certainly give us a call. We are here as a resource for the renter, but also the landlords as well. Um, and speaking of landlords, uh, again, we're a resource for landlords in that we offer uh, a lot of um, uh, services. Uh, we can tell you about your, your rights as a landlord under the Fair Housing Act. We can tell you how, how to be proactive. One of the ways that landlords can stabilize their income is by assuring that the, that the housing is stable for their tenants. And one of the ways they do that is let's take this guide, for example. Any landlord that gets their hands on this guide can use this as a tool to either email it to their tenants, to mail it to their tenants and say, hey, I know you're going through a tough time. Here's this guide. Hopefully you'll be able to get, get some, some help with, uh, with you know, food or, and, and, um, and financial help and, and those kinds of things. And the other things that we do for landlords are informal housing resolution. Sometimes the communication can be a bit testing, right? Especially now, I mean, landlords are being told that you can't evict if someone doesn't pay. And so that, that you know, gets your, your hair to stand on end and landlords are left thinking, well, what rights do I have? Well, uh, you know, at this point, what we're looking at is we're all in this together. We got to find a way to communicate and be proactive. So, you know, I would suggest you could give us a call uh, 717-299-7840, um, and we can provide you many of the services listed on this page. Uh, we also have the eviction prevention network that uh, helps from time to time uh, with renters that maybe have, have lost uh, the ability to pay, but are still able to pay once they, they get past the hiccup. Did we want to go into the sample letters then? It's a sample letter that you could write to your tenant. Uh, we have this on our on our website. Uh, www.lhop.org, and uh, it basically talks about the fact that you recognize the changes that have occurred due to COVID-19, uh, and that you're offering uh, the ability to to talk it out, to basically say, you know, is it a payment plan? Uh, let's put a plan together, because at the end of the day, this is a relationship based on customer service. You know, when a tenant pays, they they expect a certain level of customer service and you want to be able to provide that. And so what we wanted to do again with this uh, guide is give you some tools that you can provide some of that customer service with the added benefit of knowing that you have a whole network of service providers out there that are willing to help and walk alongside with you to, to, uh, to speak and, and deal with, with tenants. Thank you, Adrian. You that was great. Um, 
And I think we've got uh, Mike back on here for the supporting individuals with mental health. Yeah, we, we know that this is especially uh, taxing for people who maybe had underlying uh, mental health challenges before COVID, uh, depression, anxiety, um, schizophrenia, bipolar, um, whether that was diagnosed or undiagnosed, uh, there's things that you can do if you have a, a loved one or a relative or a neighbor who, who may struggle with some of those challenges that you can do now to make sure that they're still feeling connected and, and they're able to, to maintain some balance um, to preserve uh, better mental health. So um, it's important to use clear communication. It's important to use accurate information that's coming from places like the CDC and remind them about those practices like hygiene and social distancing. Um, try to filter out some of the misinformation that's out there. There's a lot on, on the internet that we've, I'm sure we've all come across where it, it um, is not helpful or accurate um, and in some cases could actually do harm. Um, it's really about that contact. I think we've all discovered you know, our telephones again. Suddenly we wanna be having these long phone conversations because we don't get to see each other anymore face to face. So make sure those folks um, who may have a, a mental health condition are, are, are part of that regular check-in that you're doing. Um, good relaxation practices, meditation, deep breathing can also really help. Um, the medication is key. Um, generally recommended to have a, a multi-month supply of, of the medication or enough to last for a period of time, or if, if you could help them set up for pharmacy delivery, most pharmacies are providing that. Uh, service. So that can be something else to make sure that they, they continue to stay on their medicine. Um, and it's routine is something that's really important as well. Um, if they had therapy that was already set up, you know, check in with people that way. There's a number of, of key numbers that are listed down there. Um, there's a text link um, that's 741741, and you can text MHA to that, and that will connect you to a nationwide crisis response resource um, that can really help people who are finding that uh, everything that's going on is creating a higher level of anxiety or panic and so forth. Um, we do also have Mental Health America here in our community that has a number of resources, so you can go to their website as well. Um, and they can, can provide some additional uh, ways to support people who are, are struggling with mental health conditions. And I think I'm up for the staying occupied and connected. Uh, I feel like I could hand this over to the group because I'm sure we've all discovered new hobbies, um, but please do check that out. And there's a great new um, video that will be going on our social media channels pretty soon from a woman on our team named Tiffany. She's a natural born teacher. So, um, and also has a very soothing radio voice. So uh, tune into that because uh, she'll give you some really creative ideas for what you can do. And a lot of the things don't involve uh, the internet at all. So um, please do check out that, that video guide. All right, Mike. And you can, uh, if you want to finish up with this last slide, then we'll be ready for questions. Sure. So uh, we recognize that the finances are tight. Um, there's a, other ways to help uh, beyond uh, money. One in particular that we could really use help with is masks, cloth masks for uh, residents of a, a family shelter called TLC that's part of, of Tabor. Um, also for our staff, for when we hopefully are able to get back to work, we know that's uh, back to work in person, that is, we know there's still going to be some social distancing practices in place. So uh, there's instructions on the last page for how to sew a mask if you have that skill. Um, and if Tabor and LHOP get excess masks that more than we can use, we'll make sure we connect that to other providers uh, who need that help. Um, there's also the Lanco Cares Fund, which is an initiative of the Lancaster County Community Foundation and United Way. Um, every little bit helps there and 100% of those proceeds will go towards supporting uh, direct client needs related to uh, housing, food, um, and other needs as they come up over the next few months because we know how unprecedented this is and there is help on the way from the federal government. Thankfully, hopefully some people have started receiving their stimulus checks. 
uh, but there's also help right here in Lancaster County where we're neighbors helping neighbors. So uh, that's a, a great option for um, if you have the means being able to, to give back to help your neighbors as well. And, and if you don't, we understand that's fine too, uh, but certainly help spread the word so that people can support that. We will include the link to Lanco Cares Fund um, in the chat box. And uh, we will also make sure that uh, the, the websites are on that, the uh, paper copy of the form as well. <clears throat> 